Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to this show. When you're done listening, I hope you take a minute and write a quick review on whichever radio or podcast platform you've heard this show. Your insights will help others to be inspired and encouraged. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to teach you two main steps for effective decision making. I'll also be interviewing longtime business advisor and serial entrepreneur Mario Peshev, who is a top ranked Quora expert. He reviews his book, 126 Steps to Becoming a Successful Entrepreneur The Entrepreneurship Fad and the Dark Side of Going Solo. This book will help new business owners succeed by sharing realistic expectations on what entrepreneurship is genuinely like. For more information on Mario, please visit mariopeshev.com. You may also purchase his book on Amazon or in the previous guest sections in both stores at jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m. and Saturday at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name James Miller Lifeology or simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com. Are you struggling to find your purpose? Has mediocrity set in and you can't imagine doing the same thing for the rest of your life? Are your relationships struggling or you aren't sure how to make long-lasting changes? Then contact me, James Miller. I will help you recognize the areas in your life that are going really well, and then we will look at the areas in which you're struggling. We will create actionable solutions to help you create long-lasting changes. You don't have to do this alone. Go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and click on the page, Work with James. Fill out that form, and it will be sent directly to me. Don't let another day go by without finding your way. Your change can start today. Once again, go to jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, Work with James. Fill out that form to get started today. Two Steps for Effective Decision Making Have you ever thought about doing something and the more you think about it, you immediately say, no, I can't do it. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. There's no way I can do it. When we make a decision before we have enough information, unfortunately, we've limited ourselves from a potential opportunity. The two main steps for effective decision making are information gathering and then yes or no. The biggest step is information gathering. It's important for you to gather as much information as possible so you'll know if it's even a viable or a healthy decision to make. Nowadays, it's very easy to gather information and go online and find really anything you want. Another way to gather information is simply asking people. You'd be surprised how many people want to be able to help or to perhaps even give their advice about something. That can be from your own friend group. That can be from professionals that you know, or sometimes just even emailing a person who's an expert in that field. Once you've gathered this information, then it's important to ask yourself, am I going to do it? Yes or no? It doesn't have to be this long, drawn-out deliberation because if you're uncertain about it, then you have not yet gathered enough information. One thing to be careful of is when we do have this mentality of, I can't do this, is we think too far ahead in the future. If I'm going to start a new job and I automatically think of myself in that new position before I've even filled out the application, unfortunately, I've taken that whole process from filling the application out to being in the position and I've made my decision on the far side of that without even knowing what this job is even like. So once again, it goes back to information gathering. So what you want to do is make sure you think out the next step, which would be filling out the job application, Googling the history of this company, looking at your own schedule to see when you're able to do certain things. Those are just examples of ways in which to gather as much information as possible and only think so far as the next step in order to be successful in whatever decision you're making. Because the more information you have just before you make the decision, the more confident you are to make an informed decision. And when you can make an informed decision based off of information gathering, it will be much easier for you to determine if it's a yes or no. You're going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're going to hear a fantastic interview with Mario Peshev. Mario is a business expert who reviews his book, 126 Steps 
to becoming a successful entrepreneur. This book is definitely what you need to gather as much information as possible to determine if it is right for you to become an entrepreneur, to start your own business. And after you've gathered your information and you've read his book, I'm certain you'll be confident in making the healthiest decision for you. I wanted to take just a quick moment to thank you all who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology. I have been so blessed and honored by your continual support. However, I want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything exciting that's happening over here. So go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv and sign up for the free weekly recap. Each week, I will send you an email which has all the latest radio episodes, YouTube episodes, magazine articles, and self-help products specifically for you. Once again, go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv and sign up for the free weekly recap. My guest today is Mario Peshev, who is a longtime business advisor and a serial entrepreneur. Mario is a top-ranked Quora expert who has over 2.2 million plus views. He shares his experience of 15 plus years of active entrepreneurship. He's here today to discuss his book, 126 Steps to Becoming a Successful Entrepreneur, The Entrepreneurship Fad, and the Dark Side of Going Solo. This book will help new business owners succeed by sharing realistic expectations on what entrepreneurship is genuinely like. Welcome to my show, Mario. Hey, thanks for having me, James. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this interview. From where are you calling us today? Uh, right now from Bulgaria. This is uh, where I'm from. And uh, we actually do have an office here with a bunch of developers. And um, I'm trying to rock from here. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I didn't realize you were calling me from there. Now, let's jump right into it. How did you know that you wanted to become an entrepreneur or that you were an expert in this? I do believe that it's something that most people don't really realize until a certain point. But then when you go back in time, you figure out that you try to be creative. You try to be different in a way you didn't really fit into traditional environments. And at some point you find yourself doing things that other people don't really think about, Mm -hmm. you know, thinking out of the box, trying to find unusual ways to solve specific problems or being the being the person who is trying to monetize something or trying to productize something. Mm. It's not necessarily in the commercial way. It's just trying to say, hey, uh, what we can do with this idea? How can we turn it into a a product? How how can we turn it into something that other people use? How can we gather customer feedback, so to speak? So to summarize that, it is essentially just thinking outside of the box or doing something different than perhaps the norm in the sense of what's, I guess, a traditional way to do something. An entrepreneur is able to say, well, wait a minute, how can I do this a little bit different? Or how can I think of this different so that it's more viable or more lucrative? Yeah, I do think it's a combination of three things. It's critical thinking, problem solving, and also creative thinking. And when you combine those three things together, suddenly it turns into an idea of a product. It turns into something that's a little bit better than everything else that's on the market. And that's how everyone has started. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. What were the industries that you started in? So it's essentially tech. My background is in software engineering. Uh, My very first startup was building WordPress themes in a marketplace, in a a pretty popular marketplace. you know, most people believe that it's an overnight success and you start with nothing and suddenly, you know, you wake up. We all know that story. <laughs> yes, exactly. We yeah, had a product plan for about four months, which suddenly got extended with another nine months and then another mm-hmm. seven months on top of that to actually break even. Yeah. Oh so, gosh, wow. <laughs> so lots of our initial plans, our, our business plan made no sense whatsoever. Right. We had budgeted for, let's say, six months and we started asking friends and family for loans and whatnot. Then we had to take part time jobs to, to just fund all that journey. It was, you know, the standard 80 to 100 hour grind. Uh, so it definitely wasn't boring. Luckily, it worked out at the end. And then we had yeah. a few other ventures. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the very first journey was in the product space, just building something for the WordPress community, which turned out to be pretty innovative. And then we kind of took it from there, took some of the ideas uh, and put it in other places and, and started to rolling the wheel. Oh, wow. I actually have a WordPress site myself, so I definitely know it well. So that's <laughs> <Yeah>. great. <laughs> so your book, 126 Steps to Becoming a Successful Entrepreneur. Let's talk more about that. Well, well first off, how did you come up with 126 Steps? That's very specific. Uh, okay, so that's a um, secret, not, not so secret story, but uh, I've spent a lot of time on Quora and uh-huh. um, it, 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 it's an easy way to, to start pushing some content here and there, just an answer or two a day. And I did that for a year and a half or two. 
And at some point I said, okay, let's let's get back and see what sort of topics I've actually been passionate about. Because I was doing that as a hobby project. It wasn't, I was, I was just chilling in the evenings or like whenever I'm burned out, I want to distract myself. I see a question and I see myself as someone who can answer with it from a different perspective. Uh, so again, been doing that for about a couple of years and then mm-hmm. turned out that one of the most uh, frequent things I've been talking about was entrepreneurship. And I gathered my editor here um, at Devrix and we worked together to just bundle all the questions and try to sum them up into some stories. Uh, then I spent another couple of months just completing them and bridging the gaps. And that's how the, the book was born. Wow. And this is kind of one of my, because lots of people ask me this question and uh, uh, kind of off topic, I do answer that. Just, just start producing a little bit of content every single day. And in a year or two, or maybe three years, you are going to have plenty mm-hmm. of content and then you just have to organize it and it's going to turn into a whole complete story. And for those of you who don't know what Quora is, it's actually a very large online community and people can ask questions, all different types of questions. And individuals like Mario, who have more of an expertise, will answer that for them. So it's a fantastic forum. Oh, and Mario, congratulations. That's amazing that you have over 2.2 million views. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, most definitely. And again, I mean, just uh, because the book is about 220 pages or so on top of my head and just starting this long endless journey to, to produce 220 words, it's, it's way too much. Yes, that's but again, a lot. An, an answer to a day keeps the doctor away, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually working in a book as well. I remember actually before I started Lifeology, I was going to write a book, but I had so much content and I just got lost. And so what I did was on YouTube, I created about 150 episodes that were about three minutes long. And so I used Uh different segments of my book and I recorded every single day. And then I went to podcasts and then radio. And so just like you, I think now I have over, gosh, what is it? Over 26 hours worth of recorded content. So now as I'm writing this book, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have all this, but now I'm working with someone to help me parse all that out. So I'm able to put it all together. Congrats, though. I mean, it's still one story. Oh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. But let's go back to your book. Now, there may be some listeners right now that say, well, Mario, I want to be an entrepreneur, but they just don't know what they don't know. They may not understand how to even start or what the lifestyle of an entrepreneur is. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Uh, What I would say is that there are two common wrong categories of people who jump into business Mm -hmm. being completely unprepared. Mm -hmm. The first one is MBA graduates. I'm talking about people who have went through an MBA degree and had no real job experience and then decided, you know, I know everything about management, Mm -hmm. about economics, about pretty much everything else. And then they try to start a business, but they, they lack the essential skills needed for a specific business whatever the required skill is, right? So this is the first category. The second category is experts in a given industry, but really niche experts, people with 10, 15, 20 years of expertise in be it construction working or even development or SEO, you name it. And Mm -hmm. those people, for the most part, they can accomplish what's needed, but they lack sales skills and marketing skills and accounting and legal and Mm. everything else that needs to be put together. So those are two of the most common categories that try to start a business completely unprepared. And this leads to the high percentage of startups that have failed. Now, my best advice for people who want to start a business, especially recent graduates and people who haven't really worked a lot, is spend at least, let's say, five or six years working for other companies. Try to work closely with management. Try to understand problem solving. Try to understand decision making. Mm -hmm. Try to study return on investment. For almost every business out there, it's all about return on investment. Yes, yes it is. And once you start gathering and grasping those concepts, once you get closer to management, you learn so much more about what it means to run a business and what it really takes to learn a business. Again, there are lots of books, including mine, and lots of other books and courses that really talk about running businesses, and I don't advise against them, right? You can, you can grab a few books, you can buy some courses and, and go through them, but most people are really skeptical and say, yeah, this is boring, or like, it isn't that complicated. Those, those people are trying to make it seem so complex, and it really isn't like this. Or 
I have sales skills. Everyone has sales skills. You know, I can sell everything to my kid because, you know, I'm their <laughs> boss and I'm going to be a boss. So, and, and, and that's kind of the, the, the most problematic dilemma. So essentially gaining experience or working in a startup uh, are kind of some of the most common ways to gain, get experience. And the other option is just start working on a side business. Start working over the yeah. weekends or late at night. Just just spend a couple hours a day and, and see what it looks like. See what problems are going to come up. See what, how would you deal with your accounting, with your annual taxes and, and all the paperwork that goes with that. How are you going to protect your trademark? What is a trademark? Talk to a lawyer. Talk to someone else. And just, just this is... This is really going to help you in a safe environment without jeopardizing your day job and your check. And the last tip of advice is go to conferences or tap into your own network and talk to business people. Business people are busy, but if you ask them out and just say, hey, um, I'm planning to start a business. I really don't know anything about it. Can you spare 15, 20 minutes? I'm going to grab a coffee for both of us. Just just really want to figure out what are your main struggles and your main problems. Or go to conferences and listen to talks and case studies and what were the main challenges. So combining all those tips together, you're going to be much more prepared to launch your own journey. Yeah, that's really incredible advice. Thank you. You know, it's interesting because most people don't realize they just don't know what they don't know. <laughs> yeah, and just like you said, people can say, oh, I can do this or I can do that, but you really don't know until a problem has come up that mm-hmm. you have to address. So the more information you have and the people with whom you associate will help you be able to parse that out to find the information that you need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, it's also making me think about you. You were talking about every night you would go on Quora and maybe answer a couple different questions. And it's really the same type of thing, or I guess the same type of advice you're giving people as well is a little bit at a time allows for you to get that knowledge or get that skill set or that foundation of information to be able to move out and move forward into whatever entrepreneurial desire you have. Mm -hmm. So Seinfeld, the actor, the famous actor, who's also a stand-up comedian, he has a theory that's called, I believe, don't break the chain. So his productivity rule is called don't break the chain. The only rule there is whatever you do, do that consistently every single day. Put a calendar on your door or on your wall and then just put a cross or whatever it is, an X for every single day you manage to accomplish that, right? The first two or four or five days aren't going to be that significant. But once you have some track record of 20 days, 22 days, 23 days, be it for push-ups or running outside or working on your side hustle, um, you know, you see 22 consecutive days and say, oh, I'm too lazy. I don't feel well. And then you say, well, if I stop today, I'm going to start all over. So this accumulating effect of just hustling more and more continuously day after day, it's really paying off with time. Yeah. And if I can piggyback off that as well, my listeners may or may not know this, but it actually takes an average of 66 times for someone to continue to do something before it becomes a habit. So that's why most people with their New Year's resolutions, they typically aren't successful is because they just didn't last long enough. (laughs) So those first three weeks when people are really gung-ho and they're really excited about it, but unfortunately... Because they haven't done it on an average of 66 times and then they lose their motivation and they're really frustrated and unsure why they just can't maintain this new change. Wonderful. So give us some of the steps that the reader will find in the book. So one of the things that are very specific about this book is that unlike almost everything that's out on the market, this book is trying to get you give up on entrepreneurship itself. As funny as it may (laughs) sound. So there are, again, two categories of people who go through the book. The first one is they say, oh, it sounds too complicated or it's, it's not really something for me and whatever be it. So that's wonderful. If you're not passionate, if you're not excited for grinding, if you're not uh, challenged by hard work, well, that's perfect. You have just saved yourself a year and a half of lack of sleep and lack of money and <laughs> lack of hygiene, probably. I don't know. Uh, so, so this kind of the first group. And, and then the second group, like reading all those sad and pathetic stories that I probably shared and just, <laughs> just uh, all the grinding and night working and working 100 hours a week continuously for years, not taking holidays and whatever be it. If they say, well, I, I'm signed up 
totally worth it. I believe it's going to work. I mean, well, those people are ready to 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 go wild. And I believe Elon Musk gave a, a talk uh, at some university and some of the college students asked them, what is your number one motivation tip for college students? And Elon's answer was, I'm trying to paraphrase, but if you need any motivation, just don't do that. Oh, that's actually and, really smart. And yeah, and it, it sounds arrogant at first, right? Because come on, like what sort of advice is this? But, but essentially, yeah, you're either passionate enough, mm-hmm. you're pretty much obsessed with this idea and you know that you're going to do pretty much everything else needed or you need some external motivation and media and talks about unicorn startups and, and <laughs> do that. So, so that, that's pretty much what the book is all about. It's, it's trying to really reveal entrepreneurship and the hustle and the struggle and of course, if you're ready to uh, ready to to go through this, well, good for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and the way I take Elon Musk's quote is, if you don't have this internal buy-in, or in other words, if you haven't fully committed to what it is you want to do or what your business is going to look like, then when the first no or the second no or the twentieth no happens, and because it will happen, then it's easy mm-hmm. for us to just turn around and say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. So if you don't close your eyes every night and envision what that looks like then it is going to be easy for you to be swayed when life happens. And it will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, for me as an entrepreneur, if there's nobody else around to motivate me or to say, James, you need to do this, or you have this deadline, or you need to call this person, nobody else does it. So if I'm not continually motivated every single day, regardless of what the situation is like, it's not going to get done. And my manifested dream turns into a wish. Mm -hmm. One other fun story I tell about is in 16th century, I believe, there was a Spanish explorer who uh, was about to pursue the treasures of the Aztecs with uh, a dozen ships or so, a really small crew. So the army was outnumbered. They couldn't really make it happen. But what the, what the general did is he said, we are going to burn the ships. There's no way back. Oh, wow. Yeah. You either go in and take it or not. And I know it's a little bit harsh, but it it really is when you don't really have a way back, when this is your only Mm -hmm. option, when you put yourself 120% in, there's no other way but make it happen. Wow. That's a really powerful story. I once read a quote that says, the person who gives up halfway on her dreams and returns to who she was goes the same distance as she who accomplishes her goal, Uh, which I think is a great lesson because if you've invested so much time and energy, why in the world would you take that and just let it go and return to where you were before? If something's not working, you pivot to figure out how to make it work. And that goes back to that buy-in that you have. If you are 100% motivated to do something and you know it's going to work regardless of what others may say, you'll find that you are successful. And that's what I think is so great about your book as well, because you really give them the full spectrum of what it is to be an entrepreneur. You really help them understand what they don't know and also give them the tools and techniques that they need in order to be extremely successful. And I think that's one thing that really sets your book apart as well. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Give us some of the reviews that this book is getting right now, because I'm sure it's getting a lot of traffic. Well, um, I've had some folks that have really wondered about it, and they went through the book, and the more analytical people, they said, I really wanted to go into it, and I wasn't sure what are the skills I lack. And now when I go through this, Mm. I have a more or less a checklist to go through and say, well, this is what I need to read. This is what I need to study. This is, this is what I need to do. And once I do that, I believe I'll be confident enough to, to get started. Oh, that's great. And I believe that, that just it's, it's pretty much saving lives, especially for families. You know, if you're a, a father of a kid or two and you have a wife who's probably pregnant or so, and then you just decide to jump into something that's not really likely to succeed, it's, it's frightening. And yeah, just it definitely can be. being ready and being confident. And again, being confident in the right way of being confident It's wonderful, and it's really going to rapidly increase your chances to succeed. This is excellent advice. I'm really looking forward to having my listeners review this book as well. If my listeners would like to find out more information about you and to purchase this amazing book, 126 Steps to Becoming a Successful Entrepreneur, where would they find this information online? Absolutely. So everyone can find me on my website, mariupeshev.com, or Twitter, LinkedIn, 
uh, definitely give me a hover if you stop by there, even Quora, like we discussed earlier. And you can find the book on my website too, or just head to Amazon and look up the 126 steps to becoming a successful entrepreneur. And would be happy to hear your feedback after you read it. Excellent. Well, my listeners also know that if they're not able to find your book, one more time, 126 Steps to Becoming a Successful Entrepreneur, The Entrepreneurship Fad, and The Dark Side of Going Solo, they can simply go to both my websites, either at jamesmillerlifeology.com or at lifeology.tv, and go to the previous guest sections in both of those stores, and that will link them directly to Amazon. Mario, once again, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest on my show today. I really did appreciate your time. Thank you for having me again. I also want to thank you, my listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you join me today. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for the free weekly recap, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, and purchase my previous guests' self-help products. If you'd like to work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support, and I'll talk to you soon.